Hello. Uh, Dave Langsather. I thought we'd uh, go through a tap tone survey of an instrument. So this is uh, my Opus 15 violin that I gave to my son his wedding six years ago. So I've just got it back for an acoustical update. So this might represent a typical uh, handmade violin that's not in the best acoustical tune. So this is just some um, blue masking tape from Home Depot. And by taping these strings down, it just keeps the strings from ringing. Um, so this is the wooden tap tone reference tool. You can make yourself. It's um, 3 by 23 and a half, and it's 0 0.15 inch thick. Um, and the base bar section is 18 and 3 quarter inch by 0 0.219, a little bigger than 5 millimeter. Um, yeah. And you'll see the instructions under the uh, useful tools on how to make that. And basically, you see just a tapered base bar material. The end grain's going this way, the end grain's going this way. So it's quarter sun, quarter sun, just glued together with uh, traditional violin making glue. And you'll notice it's also calibrated. And then there's three marks, an S, a T, and a B. That's the scroll, top, and the back plate. All right. And basically the scroll tap is this. And the back tap, if you just put an X between these two corners, the opposite corners, that's going to be your back tap. And if you didn't have tape on here, you'd simply stop the strings with your hand, your fingers here like that. And for the top uh, tap tone, we're just going to go halfway between the small holes of the sound holes, and right in the center. You can just reach through between the D and A string. And that'll be the top tone that we're interested in. Okay, so let's uh, let's just start a general review. And first, uh, you can actually tune the chin rest, which is maybe not a bad idea. But this is what I'd suggest for the chin rest. Uh, oh, and on the back, uh, we'll put a little felt strip across, just glue it on with uh, like bottled hide glue, and that's just uh, felt. And this is 22.4% of the length in from each end. That's out of an acoustical book, acoustical research book. And when you put it on, you can just glue it on one side and just tape it on, again with your blue tape, and uh, then just push down on the side to let it uh, let it cure, and then the next day just take it off and voila, you're ready to go. So these are two of the three I made, and uh, find out the most useful range. This would be a little higher tone. You can use that for maybe cellos or double basses, something like that, or general research. And this is one particularly set up for a violin. Okay, so, and this is a, just a piece of about four inch long, quarter inch diameter, uh, spruce sound post material. So you just make that and it's uh, sharpened like in a pencil sharpener here. So you can get in close to the strings or the fingerboard. But most of the time we'll be using the big end. So in this case you just tape, tap right to center. And you can just have this on a flat surface or you can hold it in your hand just loosely on the side like that. And let's see where we're at. Down. So this is lower. A slightly lower. Slightly higher. So when you find this lower, slightly higher, right in the middle. And that would be uh, 179. So I'm just going to put a note down here. Chin rest. 179. And then I'll just put a little note down here and be right about here and say 179. And this should probably be the 176, same as the top. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do the top first. That's very important. All right. So I think we're already got it bracketed. It's lower, higher. All right. So we get the scale, and it looks like it's about 187. So I'm going to go to my chart here and offset uh, 187 to be right there. And I'm 187, and I say top plate. Right. Now, if you tap this area in the system, so this is higher than the center of the uh, top plate, and that's lower. The center is going to average these two. We'd like all these to be the same. What we'd like to do is this tone match. we'd like. You see they're not the same. So um, like a really good violin, this will all be at 176 and these sides will match and it'll be the same all the way around. And there's instructions on how to even that out with the uh, top removed uh, on both the inside and outside plate. So right now we know that the uh, now what do you say? 187. And we'd like it to be here. So it's here now. That's where we'd like it to be. Get on the back plate. It's lower. A little bit lower. Slightly lower, slightly higher, higher. Somewhere in between. All right, so I'd make that to be about, um, well, 187, uh, 197, I'm sorry. So this is 195, 200. So we'll call it 197. We'd like it to be 198. So that's pretty close. 197. Back plate. All right. Now we'll compare that to the two sides. And then here. When we tap the plates, uh, remember there's a corner block, a wood block inside, so if we're going along like this, we need to come out a ways to get away from the block. So it would be here, it would be here, but it's out here. So that's, kind of okay. so that's remarkably even all the way around, and <clears throat> it's almost an ideal. And <clears throat> excuse me. Once you have a plate that's at one of these goal frequencies, like 198 for the back, then you can use this as a reference to the rest of the instrument, for instance. You say, well, the next can be too high. You say, this is going to be a bit low. And then for the end pin, say the end pin's a bit low.
Okay, so the, the tailpiece is going to be close. In here, this is... There's actually um, four tap tones. We're going to go in the waist area here, right next down. And if you want to find where it is, just tap along and listen. So it goes uh, up, back up. So when it comes to the lowest point with the lowest overtones, that's going to be the waist. And you tap on the waist behind each string. So for the G string, it would be. So it's right in this area, a little bit low. This is where you'd like the tailpiece to be. So it's right there. And then behind the A string. It's just slightly above the B. We like to be at B, so this one's a little higher. And then E. Let's see, just slightly below the B. So there's one slightly low, slightly high, and then low, and, and quite a bit low. And so we're going to even that out. So we're just going to take an average for right now, just for the... And say it's 195. So I'll put cover from about 195, say 195, tailpiece. Now you notice there's a, and sometimes this is bone, but it can also be a little ebony strip. And I'm calling that the, um, what do you call this? The uh, string bar. So that little block of wood or ivory or uh, bone, whatever it is, we call that the string bar. That has to be tuned separately. And this should match the top. And the top should be at 176. So see where we're at. And you got to tune each of these separately for each string. So it's high, lower, lower, lower. So I'll just take an average one here for now. Alright, so I'd say it's 175. We'd like it to be 176. So we'll just put down here 175 string bar SB, and that's a D. Okay, and then we'll, like I said, we'll end up doing these individually. Uh, let's see how the bridge is doing. Ideally, we'd like this tap tone to be even all the way across. And this should match the back. So you hear the bridge is too low compared to the back, which is almost at our goal frequency. So that's. And it looks like that's about uh, 196. So that's not bad. So 196. Call it bridge. And again, there's different frequencies. That's lower. That's slightly lower. Let's see, a little bit lower. This goes. Uh, okay, now the fingerboard, um, we'd like this tap frequency. And that's where your um, <laughs> this should you can get it past the strings this way. And notice when you're using your tool, uh, you can just kind of here and just drop it. So you go down as you go down, you let go of it. And your hand comes in and bounces back up and you catch it. So I'm not actually going boom, boom, boom. I'm just actually dropping it and catching it on the rebound. So it's. So I'm letting go as I'm coming down and I catch it. Okay? I'm not doing this. I'm just dropping it. I'm catching it. Drop it.
catch it. Okay, let's. So ideally now for the fingerboard, you want this to be even, all the way up and down, all over, under every string. And if this is even all over, then every note you finger will have the same kind of strength, the same kind of uh, tone quality, the same kind of power. Um, so because this is wood and uh, there's some, has a curved out area under the top of the fingerboard and all these things have to be just right, plus you have a, a bit of a, it's hollowed out this direction to keep the strings from buzzing and to compensate it has to be hollowed out in this direction to raise the tone back up in the middle because you scoop it down, you lower it or the frequency in on the sides raises it back up. So. so that's fairly consistent all over so we'll just pick a spot here for now. Move the strings down. So it's between those two. Alright, so that looks to be about 172. So I'll put down here one. 172. Fingerboard. Okay, and then under the tap tone technology section you'll see how to adjust and we'll go through each of these different areas and show you how to raise or lower each piece all the way through. But for now we're just interested in the general area where things are. Um, so you know the top plate's too high, the fingerboard's close, it's only got to go up from 172 to 176, the back's almost perfect. Um, scroll, if we find out where that is. So this is the scroll and again There's actually three tones. One. There's three here. The middle, this middle would be the average. We'd like them all to be the same. And we'll talk about how to do that later. So take the average for now. Oh, that's higher. That's lower. 